what I want to have a quick look at here is constructing a template for a sublimation template for a latte mug. Now this mug is based on one of two mugs available from sublimug.co.uk I think it is. Um, however it's a blank mug. It's a given height and and uh, all of the dimensions come with it. Now the the only way I've found to do this is to think of a cone, which the mug is, as upside down. So if you're doing the calculations and you're doing the calculations for a cone, the base of a cone is actually the top of the mug. So think of your mug as being upside down and forming part of a cone. This will make it all become much more clear. But the simplest way of doing this and getting that curve right for both top and bottom curves are like this. Now let's have a look at the layers. That's almost the finished product there. That first layer means nothing. The pie there, let me hide that. You can see the pie there. That's the first one. Let's open the layer up. That's actually the top of the mug but the bottom of the cone. So if you're trying to work out diameters and circumferences by the cone method, this is the bottom of the cone. Top of the mug, bottom of the cone. Let's have a look. The size there, you can see it's 280. That's the diameter, which is the, the measurement you need. The diameter of the top of the mug, 289 millimeters or 28 um, no sorry 200 200 yeah, 28 centimeters sorry which seems quite big but there we go that's the diameter across the thing you can check this with rulers and things but they're your two measurements so you draw out an exact pie as I've got there that's 280 by 280. Never mind the position on the page, I've got, although that does become important, we'll go to there, I've got the centre vertical mark there and the horizontal mark there, the guide marks. You put those in place with guides and add horizontal. You can see that dotted line there, the red dotted line in the center, which I just moved slightly. And the vertical, you can see the vertical there, just running down there. Okay, so there's your centers for your, for your circles. Let's go back there. So we've got what we've got now is the first circle, which is the diameter of the top of the mug. Now we need the second circle, which was, in our case, the base of the mug or towards the peak of the cone. Remember, cones the other way up than the mug. Now there's our circle. You can see in the center there. If these become, if these drift off slightly with their measurements, it's because I'm touching the screen. And there's not much I can do about that. This works equally well on the desktop, I might add. And on the desktop, you can have a look at your guide manager and you can read where you've got your horizontal guides are. Unfortunately, on the iPad, they don't seem to show up anywhere unless you're actually putting the guide in place. Then it shows the measurements, otherwise you don't see them. Anyway, without any more confusion, there's the pie that forms the diameter of the base of the mug, or the peak of the cone, towards the peak of the cone. It's the base of the mug. Let's not confuse this with cones. Now, it's really interesting because there's a curve there and there's a curve there. That curve there, in this case, is the arc. Now how did I work that out? I worked that out by 
drawing a line using the pen tool from the left hand edge to the peak where the line joins the top of the diameter. Let me show if any of those show up and that's the bottom one. I caught that's a copy of the top one. That one there I did first and copied it and dragged the copy down so that it's sitting down there. Now those the sides this is difficult to do because I'm going to have to touch that. You can see that dot there and that dot there and I should be in edit mode otherwise that's gonna really mess things up. Back back edit mode from there to there that line there is in this case a millimeter or two longer because if you stand that up you will see what it is but because they give the measurements the height is 151 and they call it the length in the subly mug example the length is 152 so that if if horizontally that was 151 the length when it lays over to the side like that is 152 hence all those guides you can see in there because what i did was then using the pen draw a line from there to there now you can see the edit marks the little bars with the dots on same at the top there so i can I can straighten those curves. You can see that there, got the curve right up. Just bring it back down. Now because I've moved all those, that's how that's really how simple it is. You've got vertical marks at the edge of your diameter of the large circle. You've got the edge of the go back to touch that. You've got the vertical marks there, you've got that vertical and that vertical, they're marking the edge of the circle, the small circle. That vertical there and that vertical guide, they're marking the edge of that circle. And you can see the base. Now the base of one circle is sitting right on the base of the bigger circle. That's to give you the point of intersection just there where the lines intersect. Now I haven't got the circle showing in full circle there. I've got the pie chunk taken out of it, but that's all right, because if it's there on that side, then it's there on that side. So that line connects with that diagram, with that guide. That line on that guide connects with that guide. And the top and the bottom of the circle, of course, bend up slightly because you're forming the arc of the circle. Now I'm going to put all this into an in-depth written tutorial, um, which I'll add as a second video with this one. And I'll do it in slides, I'll take my time, I'll put all the measurements, I'll show you exactly what everything means. But what you're doing initially is you've got one big pi, little pi, a curve at the top, that box there is the difference between the end of the top curve, you can see there and there, it's the end of the top curve and that one there is on the other side. You can see that there on the right hand side. Now I could move this off the page but I've got to highlight everything to do that. That tells you where your slanted vertical is. It goes from that corner down to the bottom of the blue part. Now I've colored that in blue. There's your bottom curve. I know it's in the top of the layers here. I could swap them around easy enough. And there's your curve colored so that when you export that, you end up with just that shape. Now let me see if I can, I'll just save that. 
have I got it here? Number 17 cut, and there's the shape. That's just a PNG file, I think. Yes, done. It's just a PNG file with a quite a heavy um, surround, and I've got a grey background behind it for the time being. And when you print that out, of course, you cut along that edge. Easy as. Done. I don't know where that went, but there you go. Okay, now we're back on top. I can close that down. You can export that to anything you like, PDF or PNG. I prefer PDFs, they always print better. Let me see what I do. Print that out, it goes to download, 17 mug iPad, save. Close that down, open up files. There's downloads, 17 mug. Now there's our diagram and you can see the circles, you can see the curves and you've got a nice cut out there because obviously you don't need all that but you can still work on that, put your design in there, within that blue area is your design. Now when you cut it out, of course you're going to have to cut it out, there's very little uh, there's very few printers will print a curve like that for you on a, on a curved piece of paper. So you cut out the curve and adhere it to your mug. And that's it for this little exercise. Thanks for watching. As I say, uh, keep tuned. Please subscribe so that when I put the, put the detailed slideshow version of this video up next week, of course, there's a bit of background work to do there. I want to show you the diagrams, the masters, the, the places I secured all this information. So, please subscribe and uh, make my day. Thank you very much.